TV, sponsored by West Beer. I'm here from one of I'm here with one of the cast from Making You, Sarah. Hi, Hello. how's it going? Very well, thank you. Are you enjoying the fringe so far? Yes, it's three days in. Yes. So it's maybe touch wood, but so far everything's nice. How has the show gone so far? Um, we, uh, it's bedding in. So the play. Um, the first couple of shows, they feel a little bit dress rehearsal-y. It's just like, oh, I'm supposed to take the bin off and <laughs> I've got the old jumper on. But then today it sort of uh, feels like, okay, we know what we're doing. The rhythm of things is right and, and it's getting there. So can you tell me a little bit about the play and the plot and the premise? And okay, so I don't get a lot of the jokes in the play, <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm like, the, the audience are laughing and I'm like, what are they laughing at? But it's about, um, it's used a very different example, but it's kind of about um, how the BBC has been coping with lots of kind of uh, sabotage in house and um, controversy and senior execs getting fired and new people. So it's, uh, it's a very intricate plot with lots of kind of references that people who like big BBC shows will love. And then there's, I have lines about things like Nicholas Witchell getting kidnapped by lesbians. And I say it and I think, oh, I don't know who that is or what that's a reference to. Do you know what that is? No. And then they're like, go have a watch it on YouTube. And then there's things about Blue Peter Elephants. And I'm like, what? And they're like, how do you not know that? So like, oh, I don't think I've watched enough TV. Do you not ask your director, what does this mean? I do. And he just says, stop asking questions. Say it. We've got two weeks. So obviously it's um, based on the BBC. Yes. Is it all completely fictitious? Or oh, the characters? it's completely fictitious. Do you have to say that? No. <laughs> I, oh, I, if I want to work with the BBC again, maybe. Um, I think, yeah, everyone's completely fictitious. It's kind of about uh, an underground cult and someone at the BBC funding that cult. Um, but so obviously that's completely made up yeah. and um, that we have all these back references to you know who which could be like a Jimmy Savile thing but right. it's not really anything okay could be Voldemort could be Voldemort exactly could be anyone yeah could be so you are primarily a comedian yes yeah. so how did you get involved and why do you think comedians are being used over straight actors oh hey that's a very interesting question because sometimes at auditions you hear other actors bitching about they only put comedians in sitcoms now like they haven't been to drama school and then you kind of slink in like hi guys <laughs> um, I was a, I've been an, I was an actor first though before comedy and okay. actually lots of comedians so um, uh, Hal Crottenden and Phil Jupiter both did acting before stand up and they're both in the play as well but I think because acting gets you used to being on stage but for a lot of people you, you're very frustrated by the lack of work yeah. so I know with me I did stand up as an experiment just like get out the house do something and then enjoyed it so much it became my job so I think that can happen quite a lot and in terms of um, also stand up is a kind of acting because you have to you're always pretending that something has just occurred to you you have to be very naturalistic so actually for TV acting yes. stand up's quite good training I think okay so do you, did you find it quite easy to get into your, the role and acting the role the, the role I have in making news is very similar to me she was oh. like I mean they were like because I didn't audition for it they said oh do you want to be in the play we kind of had you in mind so I was very lucky and then I read the script which is just kind of like moody and rude and has some very fun Funny lines, and I was like, mm, that's not, me. Much, not much acting involved, and I'm like wearing my own clothes and stuff. Um, so, has the audience been responding really well so far? Really well, I think we're very lucky, especially because it's uh, Fringe started so early this year. Yeah. Like, we started, had our first show in July, and it's like, what's anyone even doing here? Um, but we've had quite big houses, and we've had, because they did a show last year called Coalition, which yeah. is about the government. Lots of people look, uh, are fans already of the writers, um, so they've come back, so it's very good for us who are new. But we're at the beginning of the fringe now, what are you yeah. most looking forward to over the month? Oh, interesting. I'm going to see a comedian called Tig Notaro, in, uh, so she comes over, she's an American comic, and um, I don't think she's been to the festival before, but she's like Louis C.K.'s favourite comic, and she's had breast cancer and a vasectomy, and she talks about really personal things. So it's really exciting to see someone live that you'd never get a chance to, so I'm excited about that. And I guess just seeing lots of plays and things, like stuff, it's so near your house. I live in London normally and everything's like two hours traffic away. Yeah. And I have gigs in the evening so I can't go and see stuff. And I'm going to go and see the Alan Partridge film because that's coming out. It's nice to have when a day off. Out? Next week, I think. Oh, wow. Because that's a nice like, day off from the festival and go to the cinema. So, yeah, nice. Oh, nice. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for having me. me. Um, where can we see Making News? So, Making News is on um, in the Pleasant Courtyard, Pleasant One, at uh, 1 o'clock every day. And then I'm doing a solo show that's mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock at uh, Assembly George Square every day. Okay, great. Thank you so thank much. You. So, go catch Making News or Sarah over your up in Edinburgh.